I've launched InDesign and I'd like to take a minute to demonstrate a few of the things that we covered in the last two lecture videos. They revolve around really basic settings for swatches, but it is important that you understand the basic settings before you can move on to what we're going to call the intermediate or advanced requirements for this course. If you launch InDesign on the right hand side of your workspace, you will see all of your panels that are available. You have the ability to customize this, whether you change the workspace under Window, Workspace, and change it to a different workspace than you're currently using. So if I change it to Advanced, you'll see that I have different panels. You'll also see that if I was using this workspace and I, I moved things, I dragged and dropped them, they might not be in kind of a happy home base over here on the right hand side. You can always go back to the advanced. If I come down and choose to reset the advanced, it will reset the workspace. I recommend using the typography workspace, it's just the one I prefer, find the one that you like. Once you have reset your workspace, almost every workspace that's available will have the swatches panel just hanging out over here on the right hand side, so you need to launch that, and then I like to undock it. If for some reason your workspace doesn't have the swatches panel or you can't find it over there on the right hand side, you can always open it manually by going to the window menu, choose color, and then swatches. However you want to do that, I'd like you to go ahead and open the swatches panel. You can see that there are a number of swatches on my swatches panel, so I want to take a minute to tell you a little bit about them and some characteristics of what you should know just by glancing at them on the swatches panel. First, you should be able to see that I have none registration paper in black and that they have brackets around the outside of the words. I can't delete those. Those are permanent and they will always be there. So if you try to delete them, they just won't go away. None means that you don't want to have whatever you have selected to have any color, and so you can remove color using the None swatch. Registration is 100% saturation of every color you're printing with. So if you're printing a cyan, magenta, yellow, and black process color, um, or process job, and you use that black color that, that says registration but looks like it's black, you should know that it's not just black. It's 100% of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. If you were printing a job that was CMYK plus spot green and spot orange, you would be printing 100% of cyan, magenta, yellow, black, spot green, and spot orange. You should not use registration in your design. Registration is for page information when you print a press sheet. Uh, when I create a color separation and I want to separate the channels of color so that cyan is all by itself and magenta is all by itself, I'll use registration so that every single printing plate that I make has all the page information that I printed in air quotes black but it's not really black because it's hundred percent of every color. If you actually want black and you only want the color black they'll use the black color swatch. In between those is paper and it is white but it doesn't have to be white if you double click on it you can change the color of paper and so if you know that you're printing on an off-white sheet of paper and it has a little bit of a yellow tint to it you can change the color of your paper so that you're seeing a more accurate representation of how your colors are going to interact with the paper color. Nine times out of ten or 99 times out of a hundred we just want it to be white because that makes everybody happy. Some other things to note is that there are two columns on the right hand side of your color swatches. On the right hand side it says that the base or the, the color mode behind the creation of these colors is CMYK. That's because when I created this document, I created it with print intent and so by default all the colors that I add will have a CMYK base. If I created a digital document and my intent was web, then all of these would have RGB next to them. More importantly, the second to the second to the last column on the right hand side, it shows what looks like a little gray box, but if you look closely on your swatches panel, you'll see it's actually a grid of dots and it represents half tone dots, and to us that's communicating that these colors will print using a process blend. If we create a new color swatch, we have the ability to determine all of these settings. So let's create a color swatch that's different than the ones we're seeing on the screen. So when we create a new color swatch, if you change a color type from process to spot, it'll allow you to give your color a name. And so maybe this is going to be a hand mixed color and I'm going to print spot green. You can then use the sliders to change the color. It's not my favorite way to change the color of the color swatch, but it works for this example. Because I chose the color type as spot when I select OK, my new color will be added to this swatches panel, but if you look at that second to right column, it now has a little circle in it representing a spot color. 
you don't have to add just custom colors and I'd actually prefer or recommend that you choose your spot colors from a physical printed swatch library or a swatch book. Most times our students are familiar with the Pantone books and so if we come down here and we choose Pantone Solid Coated which is just a physical book that you can buy that shows all these different Pantone colors that you could purchase and if you purchase that color ink it becomes a spot color but if you choose Pantone Solid Coated you can see that there's a number of colors I would never come in here and say that's the right shade of pink I would look in the physical swatch book find the right shade of pink and say oh the right shade is Pantone 212C and grab that color I can't really trust what I see on screen so if the, the pink on screen looks more red or more yellow or it's darker or lighter than the swatch library the physical printed book is the one that you would trust and you would say I understand it looks slightly different on screen but when it prints it will print the color of the physical printed book I looked at and you can see that both of these colors were added and they are spot colors if you're comfortable with the idea of adding spot colors changing them between spot and process and identifying what what makeup the, the, the ink has on your swatches panel um, you can move on to the next video in this lecture